This is the brand new Land Rover Defender 130 and it's obviously the longest Defender in the lineup. It's 13.4 inches longer than the 110 and it comes with two engine options. You won't get the V8 with this one. And what I want to do in this video is talk about the design of this thing because the proportions between the 3 and 90, 110 and 130, they're pretty significant and I'm going to show you inside view just how different they look in proportions. It will start under $70,000 which I think it's a pretty good deal honestly. Under $70,000 for the 8 seat 130, it's pretty cool. However, there is one thing about the 130 that I wish Land Rover would uh, bring back and I'm gonna talk about that in just a second but first let's have a look at the front view real quick and I, I don't know if I made a video on this Defender I, I probably I did a redesign of it but I didn't talk really about this design so what I think about this design overall I think it's a cool mix of um, modernizing the original Defender because that's a not an easy task it's such a iconic car as you know this still has this more of a boxy shape and less blingy style than the other Land Rovers the Range Rovers and the Evokes and the uh, Velars and, and all those models they are more uh, upscale I would say maybe less maybe not less rugged but the styling just looks more fancy in those cars and here we have these rectangular headlights which I think looks really cool I also like that it has those angry uh, daytime running lights right here it looks pretty cool as well and having them round instead of having some other styling also brings back some of the original from the original Defender but I think this area right here this is where it gets a little maybe too busy for me because here we have an intake up in the front up up top right here which then has a uh, body color piece in it and then going down further we have like a a, a high sitting bumper <laughs> i guess you would call this something like that and then you have an air intake or something a slot in this bumper as well Go, going down further then we have another intake down here with a different shape and then going down further from this we have now a another intake down here with a completely different texture and shape than the other three above it so we have one two three four types of different graphic intakes in the front end it gets a little busy in my opinion and probably maybe remove one of these intakes or maybe make them the same style would help out with the messiness in the front end but other than that I really like that they still have the lettering defender it's just spelled out up top up top there it looks really cool but now we're gonna go into the side view and this is one where things get really cool in my opinion because the side view of course from the 90 110 and 130 that's where you can definitely see the differences and then also show you the rear view real quick so here it is the 130 in a side view it looks pretty cool I mean it you can definitely tell that it's been stretched right here in the back from the 110 and definitely from the 90 as well which is a two-door as I'm sure you know I like the one uh, 110 the most I would say when it comes to proportions I'm gonna show you all three of them side by side in just a second but first let's just talk about the 130 here so this is where the added space comes in in the rear end and this is where you have you can see that it's a uh, third row of seats back here so you have a full row in the rear end for eight seating two in the front three here and then three here as well and this looks like it's been extended it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Grand Wagoneer which also has some a lot weirder propor proportions than the Defender the Wagoneer looks they, they both kind of look a little off with this long overhang in the rear but the Wagoneer just takes it to another level because this volume back here is looks way too massive it looks like it has some swelling in the back or maybe a backpack of some sort or something like that and you also have the wheel size being smaller than on the Defender I like that the Defender has bigger wheels it fills out this uh, th this section of the car it kind of takes up more space than it does on the Wagoneer and it just looks better with these overhangs in the rear that we have on both of these two cars but one thing that I wish really want uh, Land Rover to bring back is the original 130 came as a pickup truck and just look how beefy and cool this thing looks so if we take this cut it somewhere here and turn this into a pickup just remove this maybe have some cover here instead 
like we have here we would be the perfect the ultimate overland vehicle just like we have here this is most likely a tent up here you have the traction boards up here and look at this uh, ground clearance uh, from uh, from the bottom of the of the body of the car down to the ground it's massive and we also would need some more aggressive tires on this because these are more road going tires more for comfort and that's probably where these defenders are going to spend 98 point nine percent of their time anyway but now let's have a look at all three of them right here and i want to show you the proportions that uh, is pretty cool when you look at them like this you have the 90 right here and then you have the 110 right here and then the new 130 all the way to the left i really like how this looks it looks like such a fun funky little land rover because the wheels are so big on this they're still the same wheel size as on the other uh, length the 110 and the and the 130 but they just look so much bigger because we have a smaller package here you can see that it looks cut off here maybe shrunken down and you, you i can imagine if you just put some more aggressive tires on here maybe some 35s or something like that and with this short wheelbase this would be a perfect off-roader that with the short wheelbase could probably crawl over anything without bottoming out then we have the 110 i think this is probably the one that looks more most balanced when it comes to the proportions because we have kind of the same overhang in the front and the rear as you can see right here creates a nice balance looking at this design from a side view and this is probably the one i would go with or the 90 i don't know the 90 just looks so cool i would probably go for the 90 but then you know if you want to have the v8 you can choose them in the one in the 110 and the 90 but the weird thing is the v8 is not going to be available for the biggest the largest land rover defender which is pretty weird because it is of course bigger than the other two but it's not going to get the biggest engine that is available for the smaller versions and here you can see that we have this long overhang in the back uh, the kind of when we look at it like this and compare the three you can see that it looks maybe a little bit off but it looks it still looks pretty cool it doesn't look like merge between a van and a suv like the wagon like the grand wagoneer did down here this looks almost like uh, like it could be a minibus or something like that the defender looks a lot better than that and that's uh, mainly as i said thanks because of these beautiful wheels with this simple five spoke design I like simple wheel designs like that. Last but not least, let's just quickly have a look at the rear view. What I love about this is it looks like it's been just cut with a sword right here because everything is flat. There is nothing sticking out here except for, of course, the spare tire. But other than that, we have some really cool graphics. These are very reminiscent for, to the original Defender with the lights on the outside, the small squares there, and then you have the bigger squares on the inside. In this interesting black plastic or whatever this is, glass style graphic, it just has a very unique graphic to it and it's definitely a design that doesn't look like anything else. And on top of that, we have these chamfers up here. We have a chamfer right here at the roof. Same angle on the chamfer here going down right here. So it creates a very nice, almost like a shoulder line on the top on the roof right here. And then you have this gorgeous shoulder line in the center as well, which I think looks really good. It looks even better when you have this long 130 uh, length on the Defender. The shoulder line really helps out the proportions of this long design. So well done by Land Rover. Now the only thing they need to do now is to turn this into a pickup truck like we have on the original 130 and we would be all set to turn that into the ultimate overland vehicle. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.